Howdy once again, this is Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, and the title of this video is 3D Printed Soft Jaws for the Bridgeport Mill. Now, in recent videos 411 and 412, I did a minor restoration on this 6 inch Bridgeport vise, and I made a pair of soft jaws out of aluminum with V ways in it, and many of you have watched that, but in the comments, several people said, Why didn't you just merely print some on your 3D printer. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. This is my 5 inch Bridgeport vise. It's my favorite because it's lighter weight than the other one. It weighs about 40 pounds instead of 55 or 60. So it's easier to toss around but I've already loosened this jaw and it's held in place with uh, two screws, cap screws. And even though it's beveled on both sides, it isn't uh, reversible. One side is bigger than the other. I wish it was reversible because there was some damage to this vise. But why is it beveled on the bottom? Because they didn't machine a sharp corner here. So it's just made to fit in like that. And I've had this off before and you can see all the dimensions on this. So I, I took this upstairs to my computer when I designed the plastic jaw, the printed jaw, and this jaw is held in place by real long cap screws. Still oily, I haven't had that off yet, but the whole idea here is some printed jaws. So I'll clean this up real well, and then uh, let's go on upstairs to the computer. I'm up at the computer now, and there I am with my buddy Adam Booth. Howdy, Adam. Well, this is the simple program called Tinkercad. I think most of you understand this, and it's, uh, I guess it's pretty powerful, but it's not like Fusion 360, and I do not know three, Fusion 360, but here is the jaw that I've already designed, and I did one earlier without that V-Way, and I had it flipped over on its back for that one, which is pretty easy to do with this program. Now, to my uh, knowledge, the holes cannot be threaded in Tinkercad. So, I just uh, printed them at uh, 6 millimeters. This is all in metric, which is no problem. So, from uh, this program, once you get it sized and, and uh, designed, we're ready to put it into the slicer, which is Cura. Here it is in the slicer, which is Cura, is the name of it, C-U-R-A. And what it does is slices it up in layers. Let me show you right there. So it starts with what you see there and builds it up layer by layer until you got a finished print. And if you look carefully here on the settings and so on, you can see that printed out solid, this is a 7 hour and 50 minute print. I usually set it up and let it print overnight. Okay, that's the general idea here at the computer without going into much detail at all, which I don't think you machinists are too interested in anyway. So let's go back on down to the shop. I've just completed an overnight print on this vice jaw, and in fact the, the bed is still warm. So let me peel it up, see what we got. And I do realize it would be easier to get off if I let it cool, but then it takes so doggone long to heat up again that I don't like doing that. And there it is. And I never get a very good finish on the back side. So now I'll start another print on one without the V groove. Let the print begin.
This is about 30 minutes into the print. After a long, long print here, it's just about done, and I'll come back in a few minutes when the bed cools, and it should come off easy when the bed is cool. Okay, the print is done, and the bed is just as cold as a witch's heart, so I'm going to pry it off. It should come right off, but I wanted to point out here that I've printed some of these uh, in different uh, uh, orientations. In other words, this one was printed, as you see it here, with the V facing up, whereas this one is printed like that. But this one, this will be the back surface, which is kind of rough, but won't matter. This will have the front surface that's relatively rough. Let's see if it comes off. Now see, everybody tells me it's going to pop right off of a cold bed, but it didn't pop right off. And Maybe I didn't get the uh, glue in the right... Oh, there it comes. But s some people say, oh, it'll, it'll lift off. It'll, it'll pop off. It'll be off when you, when you get there. Rougher than a cob there, you see that? And then that's a brim, it's not a, a raft. So I'll have to... I'm going to scrub off the glue with a fingernail brush. In the in the sink, and that come right off, and then I'll see you at the workbench. A little bit of trimming there with a handy knife or a file. I printed up several of these while I was trying to make sure that I had the dimensions right and the hole spacing and all of that, because this this is all new to me too, you know. So these samples here printed a lot faster than uh, seven or eight hours when I did a 20% fill like this. And I cut one and a half just to show you what that would look like. But these two are solid, which took a lot longer to print. And as I said, the holes are not threaded. They're six millimeters, so I had to, I will have to drill these out quarter inch, which isn't much. Just to clean them up a little bit. And then I tap them 5 16 18 and just have to make sure I tap them straight. This is the one that I just printed a few minutes ago. I got to take the burrs off. It's hard to deburr this because even when you deburr, you put up another burr. And this is the one where I would have preferred to have the good surface out. But since this is all just a grand experiment, it doesn't really matter. So that one's going to go in there. This is the other solid one, eight hours solid. And you could put other V's in there, uh, print them in, or steps, or whatever. So it's, it's pretty neat. Really pretty neat. So let me get these tapped and fastened in place. This really is all scrap, but it was fun doing. The holes are tapped. Again, it's hard to get those burrs off. I always mark them. Although you can feel that this is much heavier than the 20 percenters. A great difference in the weight that you can even sense with your hands. But, and again, I don't like that finish. That's something I need to work on. Probably in the settings. And I am going to be careful I don't strip the, these uh, threads out because I would suspect that they're not all that sturdy. This is PLA plastic. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'm just snugging them up. And there we are. Well, who the heck wants or needs plastic jaws? You're thinking, well, if you had to put your pistol barrel in there or something, you don't want to mar it up. This might be just the ticket. Is PLA the, the best material? Uh, probably not. You could use nylon or whatever you got. This is all I've been printing so far as I learn how to do this. And my main focus here is still metalworking, not plastics, not printing. But you will see some of this entering into my, uh, my videos as, as I go along. And there's the original, of course, which I am not going to throw away. I fully intend to 
probably put these back in after I use this and experiment with it just a little bit. By the way, do you know what the difference is between science and just playing around? Hmm. It's a matter of writing it down. It's the only difference. There we go. Soft jaws for the Bridgeport Mill. This is PVC plastic, 3 8 thick, that I got from my brother Jan some time ago, and you can buy it at McMaster Car. But in 20 minutes, I could have made a pair of these, drilled and tapped and installed. So, you know, what'll it be? The printer? They cost $500? Or just a piece of PVC? You tell me. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in the next video, I hope.